guys, so this is a review on the MacBook Pro mid-2010 13-inch A1278 in 2020. Okay, if you ask if this machine is still usable, yeah, it's still very usable. It's worth it for this price. I bought this uh, almost two years ago, but the state in which I bought this is that it's still pristine. Everything is in order except for the Wi-Fi trackpad. Okay, so I guess I haven't closed all my windows down. Windows. Hmm. Just kidding. So the trackpad wasn't working because I broke the trackpad upon checking it. Uh, I just destroyed the flex cable, so I bought another trackpad. But that took a while, almost two years. I just bought this recently, a few, oh, three weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Yeah. This is the screen. It's not Retina screen. It's an HD screen, one two eighty by seven twenty. Not sure. As long as it's HD. The front camera is also HD. The keyboard feels fantastic. It's one of the best keyboards out there. I like typing with this stuff and I really like using this in my everyday routine or everyday work. The problem here is that hmm, the software is not really that easy to begin with because it started out with a uh, hard drive software included in it, but I upgraded this to an SSD 128 gigabytes my old SSD from Windows. I reformatted it and I installed um, Yosemite and then I proceeded to Al Capitan and then you could upgrade this to uh, High Sierra at maximum. Okay, you can't go beyond High Sierra or later than that. I tried to um, install High Sierra and it was buggy as hell. You can't even work anything. It just shuts down, shuts off. It doesn't really work completely. So what I did, I uh, tried to roll back to El Capitan and I read a few of a uh, uh, few messages about this and I also heard from a friend. His name is Andrew Maragino. He repairs MacBooks. He's doing it uh, for his uh, living and he's very good at it. Okay, I asked his advice. And you should follow or subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's really good. Okay, Andrew Maraginot. He advised me to install uh, No Dos No No Dos Dudes uh, Mojave or Catalina software. You could install Catalina or Mojave on a very old machine, just like this one, but it doesn't guarantee you the perfect rendition. Okay, I installed that using the instructions in uh, No Dos Dude. But it took a whole day to process and tell you the software thing about this is just too uh, difficult for an ordinary person without time. So you must have time for this to set this up because you don't have uh, the perfect uh, hardware for this. Because at first it doesn't have Wi-Fi, so you need to install Wi-Fi, install the new trackpad, install the software. The software is the most annoying part of this machine. Because after running it, installing it, it works fine. But it doesn't support all of the Win32, sorry, it doesn't support the 32-bit software installed before this one. Okay, so what a bummer. But it doesn't matter, that doesn't, uh, doesn't destroy my day. There is a lot of software that I need uh, in 64-bit, so it's kind of cool. But will you uh, ever try to use this in these times? I uh, suggest no, don't do this. It's, uh, it's an expensive path for you. It's not the best path that you can create. It's one of the worst actually. Okay? The software is buggy. The hardware is slow. It's even slower than my Windows laptop. So I won't suggest that you uh, buy one of these. Although uh, you could buy these for about... 15,000 pesos here in the Philippines, or even less, 12,000 lowest, uh, with all working specs, even software. But I suggest don't buy that. I don't buy or don't go this route. It's very difficult to set up. It's very slow. You can't even edit YouTube videos. That's how miserable this thing is. But it has the best keyboard, um, best response for me, especially in the trackpad. It's one of the best. I'm not going to argue with that. But if you want convenience, please don't use this, okay? 
it's uh, it's better to buy a Windows PC for the price range of this one. I think a ThinkPad would do it would be better, and you could upgrade a ThinkPad or a Windows machine to whatever you like, especially the RAM and SSD. But if you convert this, let's say you upgrade to an SSD, it will be significantly faster. But when you uh, upgrade the RAM of this one, it doesn't really uh, eat that much. And the CPU is a Core 2 Duo CPU. It's not an i CPU. Maybe you could buy a MacBook that has i5 or i i3 in it. But if you have a Core 2 Duo CPU, please don't buy this one. Okay, it's a mid 2010 again. Mid 2010 MacBook Pro. Uh, it has six gigabytes of RAM. So even with that kind of RAM, it doesn't even work. Also, the hardware for this, especially the auxiliary hardware, even though I haven't replaced them tends to be very expensive. You don't have to buy the uh, the aftermarket ones. You need to buy the appropriate proprietary ones because it will break this machine. It will break it if you buy third-party chargers, third-party adapters, so on and so forth. This is the Apple culture. I mean, philosophy. Apple philosophy. So if you want this in your machine right now, in 2020, 10 years beyond the date of release, well, I don't. Don't, I don't suggest it. But if you want a keyboard feel, if you want the work feel, just typing, it's going to be a good machine. Good machine, not a great one. Okay. If you want a good or a great machine, I suggest you buy a Windows machine like a ThinkPad or a Dell um, Latitude laptop. Okay, so that's all for today. I'm just reviewing this one, saying my uh, opinion about using the MacBook Pro mid-2010 13-inch A1278 6GB RAM Intel Core 2 Duo. So that's all. Thank you for watching.